Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on antenna design. On my previous antenna design discussion, I actually derived the equation of Prince transmission formula. So basically, this video, okay, I will make use of this Prince transmission formula in order to derive the equation for free space path loss. After I derive the equation of free space path loss, I will make use of that equation okay, to calculate the anticipate loss between the transmitter and receiver antenna. So basically, this will be the objective of this video. Okay, so in this video, I will have two examples to calculate the free space path loss in between the transmitter and receiver antenna. Guys, if you're keen to know more about antenna design, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on antenna design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay? Or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help me. Just give me a few seconds. Help me press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's quickly understand what is actually free space path loss. Okay, so in telecommunication, okay, so this free space path loss, okay, which is known as FSPL, is also known as free space loss, FSL. Basically, this free space path loss is actually the decrease in signal strength of a signal that is actually traveling between two antenna, transmitting antenna and receiving antenna on a condition okay, with a line of sight. Okay, so basically, this is the definition of free space path loss equation. The standard definition of the term okay, for antenna, okay, according to the IEEE standard, they actually define free space loss as the loss between two isotropic radiators in free space that is actually expressed as a power ratio. Let's quickly go through what I have derived on my previous video. Okay, so basically, I have derived this Prince transmission formula. Okay, so basically, on my previous video, I actually derived this equation. So over here, you can see that what is actually free space path loss is basically a power ratio. So therefore, I move over my transmit power onto the left, and this is actually the equation for free space path loss, which I'm going to further explain. Okay, so basically, in short, what I'm going to do is basically just shift this PT over to the left, and this is actually the equation. Okay, so let me continue to derive the equation of free space path loss equation. Okay, so this equation is what I have on my previous page. Okay, so the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10 log on both sides, on the left and also on the right. So basically, this is actually the formula. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I will not do anything. Let me concentrate on the equation on the right-hand side. So basically, I just want to expand this equation here. So from here, you can see that these are all multiplied. So basically, all this will be just a plus term. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here is I just separate them into different terms here. Okay, so basically, it's 10 log GT, 10 log GR, 10 log lambda over 4 pi R. Okay, so this R is actually the distance between the transmitter and receiver antenna. Okay, so basically, I just do this part here. Next, since I saw a 2 over here, okay, I'm going to shift this 2 down. So therefore, this become 20. Okay, so I have not do any so-called uh, higher mathematics over here. I just simplified the equation. So basically, this is actually a free space path loss. Okay, when we actually talk about loss, okay, basically, this will be a minus term. And basically, this is why I convert this into minus. Okay, this is because, as you can see from this equation here, let's say this is a free space path loss. You can see that the gain okay, of the transmitter and the gain of the receiver antenna, they don't play any part to contribute so-called the loss in between the transmitter and receiver. So hence, I'm pretty confident that these two equations won't do any contribution to the final of free space path loss equation. So what left outstanding will be just this equation here. And remember, you must always keep this in mind. 
when we actually talk about losses, this must be minus. So therefore, over here, you can see that I actually convert this term into minus. In order to make it minus, what I need to do is basically I just switch these two equation here. So therefore, this will be my equation for my free space path loss equation, as you can see from here. Okay, so this is actually a very general equation for my free space path loss equation. Let me continue. Okay, so basically this is what I have on my previous slides here again. Okay, so next, okay, I'm going to find out, okay, since this is a wavelength, okay, I know that C equals to F wavelength. So basically I can find my wavelength, which is C over F. So when I actually apply this wavelength C over F, I actually has this equation. Okay, so this F, I just move it on top here. Okay, so again, I just want to simplify this whole equation. As you can see from here, it's 20 log 4 pi over C plus 20 log F. So basically this F is actually the frequency. This 20 log R, this is the so-called distance in between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, so basically the C is actually the speed of propagation of the so-called electromagnetic wave. And we can consider this as the speed of the light, which is 3 times 10 power 8 meter per second. This will be a known number. Basically, you can see that on my left-hand side is basically all the numbers that I actually know. And basically, I just punch my calculator. I will actually get this 32.44. Okay, so basically, this is a fixed number. But over here, you can see that I actually have 10 to the power 6 and 10 to the power 3. Why? Because, okay, I'm going to take the frequency as megahertz. Megahertz is actually 10 to the power 6. So basically, I just enter my frequency in terms of megahertz in this equation here. As for the distance, okay, basically, I'm going to enter in terms of kilometer. So kilometer is 10 to the power 3. So therefore, you can see that this 10 to the power 6 and 10 to the power 3 is actually because okay, I want to simulate my frequency as megahertz and also my distance as kilometer. So therefore, I have these two additional terms. And again, like I mentioned earlier on, if you punch this in your calculator, okay, I don't foresee you guys having any issue to so-called arrive at this 32.44. So basically, this will be my free space path loss equation. So over here, you can see that I quickly derived the free space path loss equation based on my Prince transmission equation. Okay, so basically, in general, okay, I will apply this equation to compute okay, my free space path loss equation. Before I continue, guys, this is very important for me. Please help me okay, by pressing the like button. Again, if you have learned something from this video, urge you to support me by subscribing to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much. Let's quickly understand quick definition on free space path loss first. Okay, so basically, this is the equation that I derived earlier on. Okay, so what is actually more detailed about this free space path loss equation here? So from here, you can see that this free space path loss, they in fact will be increased okay, with the square of the distance. Okay, basically, this is the 20. If you so-called do it in a ratio, they will be in the square of the distance between the antenna okay, because radio wave actually spread out following the inverse square law. Okay, so I have explained this inverse square law based on my previous discussion. Next, Okay, it decreases with the square of the wavelength of the radio wave and does not account for any power loss in the antenna themselves due to imperfection or environment interaction. Okay, so basically this is the factor over here. Okay, they mentioned wavelength. Okay, so basically wavelength is also a function of frequency. So basically this is a quick okay, explanation of this free space path loss equation. Okay, so this free space path loss is rarely used in isolation, okay, but rather as part of the Prince transmission formula, okay, which incorporate the antenna gain. Okay, so most of the time we actually incorporate the antenna gain, which I'm going to show it to you later on. Okay, so it is a key factor in power link budget for analyzed radio communication system, ensure sufficient signal strength reach the receiver for intelligent transmission. Okay, so basically in short, once we can calculate the anticipate loss in between the transmitter or receiver, then we are able to be so-called in a better position to determine whether we can or cannot receive the signal. If let's say we can't receive the signal, then we probably can consider to increase the transmission power or increase the gain of the transmitter or receiver antenna. So basically, this is a reason why we need to calculate this free space path loss equation. Okay, so this free space 
path loss equation, they actually assume a channel free of all obstacles that is in between the transmitter and receiver. They also will not have RF propagation effects such as absorption, reflection, refraction, or diffraction. Okay, so basically, in short, they need to have the line of sight. The transmitter and receiver must have the line of sight, which means that the transmitter must be physically see the receiver antenna. So basically, this is what it mentioned here. Okay, so the energy arriving at the receiver is assumed to be only a function of the distance from the transmitter. Okay, so which is the inverse square law, which I have explained. Okay, so a free space channel catalyzes an ideal RF propagation path. Okay, so basically, this is actually a so-called uh, ideal calculation. In short, from here, you can see that this is a very simple equation. Most of the time, in a practical sense, we actually make use of this equation to calculate whether we are able to receive the signal or not. Okay, so basically, this is the discussion okay, on the free space path loss. Now, let's come to the so-called two examples that I mentioned early on. So this will be the first example here. Okay, so a microwave carrier system they actually operate at 450 megahertz, which means that they actually send signal using the frequency of 450 megahertz. And they has a range of 25 kilometer, which means the transmitter and receiver antenna, they are separated by 25 kilometer. The transmitter power is 25 watt, and the receiving and transmitting antenna gain are 24 dB each. Assume no other loss, calculate the following free space path loss. Okay, so, so basically, in short, this equation, free space path loss, will anticipate the loss in between the transmitter and receiver antenna. This is the equation that I derived earlier on. Okay, so let's do this question now. From here, you can see that okay, the frequency is actually already in megahertz. So I do not need to change them. Okay, so basically, I just need to substitute 450. Okay, please take note. Uh, so don't put this thumb 10 to power 6 over here. This is already account for. So basically, the frequency must be in megahertz. So therefore, I just enter this 450 megahertz. Next will be the distance need to be in kilometer. The question told me that it's 25 kilometer. So therefore, this is actually the free space path loss equation. What you need to do is basically you just need to punch this in your calculator. You should be able to derive that this free space path loss equation is equal to 113.46 dB. Okay, so basically this is the loss that I'm going to anticipate in between the transmitter and receiver. Basically separate by 25 km using a frequency of 450 MHz. Okay, so this is the first example. Okay, let's quickly go through the second example also. Okay, so the second example is actually a satellite that is 500 km above the Earth. They transmit a signal at 1.6 GHz to an Earth station. The transmit power of the satellite is 100 Watt. Estimate the receiver signal in dBm at the antenna of the Earth station. Okay, assume free space path loss. Okay, so basically, this is the equation for free space path loss equation here. Okay, so I, I didn't do the 0.44 okay, because they are almost the same. Okay, I just want to put it here to illustrate that sometimes you see that this free space path loss is known as this 32.4. Okay, so they are still the same because it's just 0 0.04 difference. Okay, so basically, let me continue. This is the equation for free space path loss equation. Over here, you can see that the distance is 500 km, so I just need to enter 500 over here. As now, you can see that the frequency is actually 1.6 gigahertz, and I need to convert them into megahertz. So therefore, 1.6 gigahertz is actually equal to 1600 megahertz. So therefore, I just need to put 1600 over here. And again, when I actually punch the calculator, okay, I will be able to obtain that the free space path loss equation will be equal to 150.5 dB, which means that this is actually the loss that I'm going to anticipate in between the satellite and the Earth station. Next, the question actually asked me to estimate the receiver signal. Okay, so basically the receiver transmission, uh, sorry, the transmission power is actually 100 watt. So what I need to do is I need to convert them into dBm. Okay, so I need to do 10 log 100 divided by 1 mini watt, so which is 50 dBm. And how I actually can obtain my receiving power. Okay, so basically what I need to do is I use my transmission power, I minus my path loss, this will be my receiver power. 
Okay, I say this again. Okay, this will be my receiving power in DBM. How can I actually obtain this receiving power in DBM? I take my transmission power in top of DBM minus the free space path loss equation here. So basically from here, okay, I actually can calculate that my receiver power is actually equal to minus 100.5 dBm. Okay, so basically, this is to calculate the path loss. This is to calculate the signal strength okay, at the receiver. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.